On this week's Joint of the Week, we're gonna do the very decorative and very cool houndstooth dovetail. This is a joint that's used in decorative boxes as well as workbenches. It connects with the chop, it connects your side panel with the chop, and it's a decorative way to do the, what is traditionally a dovetail. It's a pretty easy joint. It's kind of a combination of a couple things, but if you can cut a dovetail, you can do this. We're gonna do it in a half blind fashion. You don't have to, you could do it as a full through dovetail as well. Um, so let's get started. First things first, I'm gonna make sure I have super square ends. When you're doing dovetails this big, squareness is a good thing to really keep track of. I have an issue I need to discuss with my table saw, which is he is off by about a degree, which is seems like a bigger problem than just adjusting the table. That hasn't happened before. So I'm gonna use my shooting board and just square this thing up and make sure we're good. And I'm just gonna check regularly. So there we go. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do on a hound's tooth dovetail is layout. Now, we're gonna do ours as a half blind as if we were doing the chop at the end of a workbench. In fact, I cut these pieces sort of to resemble a workbench. They're three inches tall. Uh, the chop is about two inches. You would do that out of eight quarter material. And so I'm gonna have my half blind come to a quarter inch and I'm just gonna use my combo square to get that measurement. I know I've mentioned it a hundred times, but it's just the most useful tip here. Combo square should have indents where the measurements are laser etched in there. So I just use it to put the wheel of my marking gauge in. And the outside of my board, which I have labeled, is going to be facing you, the viewer, right now. So I'm just gonna mark that quarter inch in there. And then what's cool about that is I can take the measurement for my tailboard, and you kind of want to do them in this order that I'm doing it, because it just helps you, especially if you only have one mar marking gauge. But I can just put it right in that line snug it up to my board here, and then go and mark my tailboard at the same time, doing it lightly first and then a little bit stronger. You just wanna make sure those lines meet up all the way around there. So we want two tails and we wanna think about layout. And so we, want, we know we want our pins to be sort of narrow. So the way that I like to lay out, especially when I'm doing even number tails, is I like to take off a quarter inch from both sides and then take the measurement in between them. So that's two and a half inches. I'm gonna split that in half, which was one and a quarter. And this is just rough layout. I'm not gonna use this for actually cutting. This is just to help me when I mark out on my tailboard how I'm gonna do it. So we know that we're gonna have our measurements there and then we can split those in half. And that's where our little hound's tooth dovetails are gonna go. So there's a good indication. So when we're laying out our tailboard, we can make sure we get those measurements right. Okay, now we want to measure how far down we want our hound's tooth to go. And this is where it can get a little bit tricky. I like to go down two thirds because I feel that's aesthetically pleasing, but your marking gauge is gonna have to change by the distance, this quarter inch that we already measured. So you want to not make this arbitrary. You wanna do it something that is measurable and repeatable so that you can adjust your marking gauge accordingly. And so what I like to do is I find a measurement that's about two thirds on my ruler and set it to that. And that way I know I can take a quarter inch off of it. So I'm doing one and three eighths. And then that way I can easily take a quarter off that. So I'm just gonna mark out and only right below where my marks are for my hound's tooth. Just gonna make a little mark like that. And then I'm gonna readjust my marking gauge. And you're gonna wanna verify these measurements after you cut your tails, but you should be right on. So we're gonna go ahead and readjust our marking gauge. And then we can go ahead and transfer that to our tails board. And again, do these kind of light because you don't wanna to have to sand out too much later. Okay, perfect. So now we have our depths laid out. Now it's time to lay out our tails. Okay, now we've already laid out on our pin board where we're gonna put them. So I'm just gonna basically rough, this is just a rough transfer. I'm gonna do it lightly in pencil. Let me get my ruler, make sure everything's right. And then on these little hound's tooth, I'm just gonna go a 32nd on either side and keep them really thin. And that is gonna give us those nice thin pins we're after. So one thing you might wanna do that'll help you if you're not using a Cat's Moses magnetic dovetail jig is just Draw these lines out with like a dovetail marker. Um, I, of course, am gonna be using the Cat's Moses jig, so I don't really need to, um, but it will help you sort of remember 
where everything goes. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and cut these. Remember, don't go past your lines on your, your little hound's tooth there. That's a common mistake that I made when I was first learning these, is I would forget and go past my line. Um, I'm gonna breeze through these. I have a great video called A Comprehensive Guide to Cutting Dovetails. It has every tip and trick I've ever learned about cutting dovetails, but um, we're gonna breeze through these and get this waste cleared out, and then we'll check back in when it's time to clear out some waste on our half blind side. Okay, now we are going to mark out our tails onto our pin board. And this is where you wanna verify those depth gauges that you made before. A great little trick for making sure that your board is up against your depth line is you could take a chisel, set it right in your marking gauge line, and you can just pull your board to it. And then once your chisel is touching the top and the bottom, you know you're right on that marking gauge line. Then you wanna look through and verify that your marking gauge lines you did for your houndstooth tails are there. And then using, depending on how skinny you made your tails, you wanna use a skinny marking knife. Then you wanna just mark out your tails. And you also wanna verify that your marking gauge line from before is right on as well. What's great about these dovetail alignment boards too, you can see I had a little movement there, but it's really easy just to go reference right back against the fence. Um, I have CNC versions of these on my website. Now here's where you wanna mark out the depth on your pin board. So you can just take your marking gauge and that's where you're gonna set up this line here. And this is going to be your depth line. And if you want to see where you're going to be going to, you can take your marking gauge and continue down the tail line that you marked out. Now we're going to go ahead and start cutting out our waist. And if you're going to use your jig, I highly recommend that you put some tape or this is UHMW or UHMV. I can't remember. Tape. And it's just a, the same thing those white cutting boards are made out of. It's a super slick surface. And it just helps because of the tooth set on your saw will scratch the face of your jig if you don't protect it. Um, otherwise, you can cut these by hand because there's not a lot of sawing you can do. We're gonna start clearing out our waist. I'm gonna stay a little bit away from our line because what's great about half blind is the only thing that matters is this face and maybe the first very little bit, maybe the first 30 second of an inch. So I'm gonna get pretty close to my line, then I'll use a chisel and I'm gonna sort of undercut them by about one or two degrees just so that it's easy for this to slide in, especially once we get glue there. So I'm gonna stay a little bit away from my line. You wanna make sure you don't go past this line and the baseline you set behind you here. Um, we're gonna use the jig and then from there, we'll just start taking out waste one way or another. I'll give you some ideas here in a minute. Okay, so now we have to figure out how to get this waste out of here. And you wanna be really careful and make sure you identify what your waste is. I do it with pencil, you could do it with marker, but basically you're keeping that, that, and that. The rest is garbage. And so there's a lot of ways to do this. I've seen Matt Cremona, which is a really cool idea, use a drill press to get some of this waste out. You could use a chisel, you could probably use a router. There's a lot of ways to do it, but I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way with chisels here, cause that's not gonna take too long. Especially what you have to remember is keep your marking knife lines till the end, get everything out of there. And then last thing you should do is take those marking knife lines. So don't work to those yet. Just get try and get a bulk of the waste out. And this is a good time to maybe use your second set of chisels. Make sure your nice chisels are sharp. This is a Matt Eslia trick. Make sure your nice chisels are sharp. Use your dull, you know, your not as good ones. Wow, it was really hard not to swear there. Get out a bulk of the waste and then use your nice ones to get down the line. Save you some sharpening, I guess. So let's get to chopping. Okay, so I've got the first kind of side of one of the bigger tails cleaned out. And I think I'm gonna call an audible and go over to the drill press and try and clear out some of this waste. It's just, it is really hard with these houndstooth to get in some of these corners. So I, to make it easier on myself, I'd love to be able to clear out some of that with uh, the drill press. And then it's really easy to chisel down to your lines because it's end grain. Um, I did have one little slip up here in the corner where I took away too much, but you know what? We'll figure out a way to hide that with a little 
piece of walnut or something. But all in all, it's coming along really well. It's just when you get into that opposite corner that's at the tip of the hound's tooth, it is really hard to get in there. I kind of did a series of chopping down and then kind of scooping motion with my chisel to sort of get into the corners and make sure everything was cleared out. Um, when you do think you have everything cleared out, take a square, stick it in there and just, you know, verify both visually and by feeling with your square that it's not hanging up on anything that you have cleaned it down to the level you, which you need. So we're gonna go ahead and set up uh, at the drill press and use a small Forstner bit to sort of clear out some of this waste. Okay, so we've got all this cleaned up and we're ready to glue this up and see what it looks like. You know, one of the things that I learned while I was doing this, those back corners are really hard to get into. So that drill press was really, really helpful. I would definitely do it that way next time. Um, and also just when you're trying to get in the corners, you gotta use all the tools that are available to you. Whatever you got, you're gonna find interesting ways to get into those corners, whether it's a skew chisel or, you know, a really small chisel, that kind of thing. But I would work your way into the corners, you know, going from the side to the back, to the side, to the back. Don't just try and get it all at once. You're gonna get a big divot in there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and glue this up. Uh, you know, I've had this experience before and just a little warning, uh, put a clamp around your piece. These walls can get really thin and it just sort of helps things from splitting apart if you're worried about it at all. All right, let's get this put together and see what she looks like. Well, guys, that really <laughs> came out so good. I'm really happy with this one, and I feel like I learned so much. And that's what Joint of the Week really is about. It's about pushing myself and practicing things that I haven't done before and learning. And so here's what I learned. Um, one is the first third, when you're coming in, cutting, when you're clearing out waste for your pins, make sure that's really flat. That's gonna help you reference for the back, because the back's really tough to get into. You gotta use all the tools available to you to really clear out that waste use the drill press to clear out waste. And that's something I've seen Matt Cremona do on half blind dovetails. It really works, it works great and it really helps. The more waste you get out of there, the easier chiseling is. The other thing that is always true when you are chiseling into end grain as you would on the pins of any set of dovetails, but especially when you're doing something that's half blind, especially when you're doing something that's this big, is end grain chisels really fast. So don't get to that line until you're ready. And when you do, make sure your chisel's right in it and make sure you're at 90. Um, and then with any half blind, you can undercut. Everything below the surface doesn't really matter because it's never gonna be seen. So make it easy on yourself, undercut it by a couple degrees and it's gonna be really easy to seat your piece and make sure you fit it in there when you hammer it home. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see on Joint of the Week. Have a wonderful day, stay safe in the shop. We'll see you next time.